Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install a Pi-hole server. Pi-hole is an appliance that sits between your devices and the internet, and it will capture all the ads before they are passed on to your devices. So for example, you have tablets or phones or smart TVs or other devices that are not able to run their own ad blockers, or you don't want to have to install ad blockers everywhere in your network, this is a great solution to do this. This particular product is designed to be run on a Raspberry Pi as a standalone device that you just plug into your router. But in our case, I'm going to go ahead and install this on a virtual machine. I'm going to use VirtualBox to do this. Uh, you could use VMware or Microsoft's Hyper-V, or you could just use a Raspberry Pi as intended. I will provide links in the video description, so take a look at that for steps to execute this on an actual Raspberry Pi as opposed to a virtual machine. So we're going to get started here. I'm going to go to my PHP VirtualBox and log in. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new virtual device. So I'll click New. I'm going to name this device Pi-hole. It's Linux and it's 64-bit Ubuntu server, the latest version available on the site. I'm going to give it 1 gig of memory. And the hard disk is going to be 20 gigs. So we're going to choose the defaults here. We're going to change it from dynamically to fixed size, and then we're going to change it to 20 gigs. Then we need to navigate to the location of where we want this hard drive file to be located on the server. So I'm just going to pick my VBox users VM path, click OK, and then the create button will create the hard disk. Then we want to go into the settings, and we want to jump down to the network tab and change the network from NAT to bridged. So this is a standalone device with its own IP address that won't be sharing with the host. And then here we're going to go into storage and click add attachment. We want to add an optical CD drive. And then when it, we select choose disk and we're going to browse to the ISO for the Linux Ubuntu server that we're going to install. We're going to check the box that says live CD and DVD. Click OK here. At this point, I try to start the device up, but I get an error stating that uh, no bootable device was found, which is fine. So we're going to go to settings here, optical drives, IDE, and we're going to pick the ISO file for that Ubuntu server. And then we have to shut the machine down and restart it, and it should boot into the live CD. So this is a standard Ubuntu server install, nothing special. I think it's version 18.4, 18.2, something like that, whatever the latest version is right now as of February 18, 2019. I'm just following the steps here. At this stage, you can see I'm actually trying to set a static IP in the wizard here, but no matter what I enter, it just boots me back to the start of the wizard. So it doesn't look like you can set a static IP in the wizard itself. So once it booted me back to the main, just click all the defaults for everything. So just let all the defaults go. Don't make any changes here. And once the install is complete, we're going to have to manually set an IP address in the config files. So this shouldn't take very long here. We're going to enter our name, the server name, a username, and then pick a password. And they should be the only values that we have to provide here. And once this kicks off, it'll start the process. Be sure that you check this box that says install open SSH server. You absolutely need that to be there. Skip all these predefined server configurations and do start the install. And this will take a few minutes, but once it's done, it should be ready to reboot. So choose the reboot option, and then you need to eject the CD. So we're going to go to the optical drives, IDE, and eject the install CD, and then Click any key to continue, and it will reboot into the, your new instance of Ubuntu server. And once this is all done, we're going to log in with the user that we just defined earlier. In my case, it's a user called developer. We need to get the IP address that we got from DHCP, so we issue the IF command A, and we're going to record this IP address. For me, it's 192.168.2.121. And we're going to go to PuTTY, which is the Windows program for connecting to Unix machines. And we're going to just enter the IP address. And click Yes to accept the key from the, from the server. And then we're going to log in over PuTTY. This is a much easier and cleaner user interface than trying to do it in that little web terminal thing. 
So from here, we were making a copy of the network interfaces file because we want to set a static IP. However, as it turns out, uh, this version of Ubuntu no longer uses this network interfaces file. It uses some other system. So we've got to actually go use a different system to change the IP address. So here we've identified what that new file is called. It's Slack ETC Slack net plan. We're just going to exit or edit this YAML file, which is some sort of Python definition or something. Um, but yep, we're just going to fill this out, type in the address, the IP address of the Pi hole, the gateway server, the name servers, and set DHCP to no. Once we've done this, we're going to save the file and then we want to refresh the net plan or refresh the network. So net plan apply. When this happens, you'll lose your connectivity to the pile because you've just changed the IP address. So you need to close out this, go back to putty, enter in the new IP address you just set. So I changed it to 192.168.2.4. Then we're going to log in again over putty and we should have our new IP address all set up for us. So here we're going to update the system. Check for any upgrades, check for any new software, and reboot. Uh, in this case, we didn't have any new software available. We were completely up to date. Okay, so at this point, we need to go ahead and download the Pi-hole software. So we issue this curl command to pull down the installation script. And we have to enter the root user password to initialize the script. And the Pi-hole will run through some processes here to make sure you're okay. We're going to select all the defaults in the wizard with the exception of the upstream provider, which we picked quad nine. Otherwise, just blast through this thing, okay on everything, leave all the defaults. This shouldn't take too long. Once this has been completed, you're gonna see this screen here. This is critical. Take a screenshot of this or write all this down because you need to know that's your IP, your password and all that stuff. So at this point, we're gonna change the password for that user by issuing the pi hole AP command and provide a new password for the web. And you can see we've just issued a new password. So now if we open a browser and navigate to the address provided in the previous screen, you can see the Pi Hall opens right up and it gives you some summary detail about what's going on. Next, we wanna log into our router, your network router, and we're gonna configure all the devices on the network to use this DNS. So you wanna go ahead and set the primary DNS to the IP address of the Pi Hall in your router's configuration. So all devices will use this as their primary DNS. Now you wanna go ahead and test that it's working somewhere. So in Windows, we're gonna issue an IP config flush DNS command followed by two NS lookup commands. Notice that the first analytics.yahoo gives us a 000, which indicates that that was dropped. And then the second one, the Google, we are getting valid responses from the name server. So here, if you wanted to manually change these settings in Windows, you could actually go to your IPv4 settings and set the Pi hole as the primary uh, DNS for the adapter. But we've already set it at the router level, so all the devices are currently being protected by this device. So back at the Pi hole here, you can click login and log in using the password that we set previously. And once you're logged in, you'll be presented with a report here and statistics about everything going on with your network in terms of all the things that are being blocked. Here you can whitelist and blacklist stuff, turn things on and off, change the settings, or apply custom uh, rules to apply to this particular uh, DNS server. So that was really fast. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Check the links in the video description or ask me questions if you have, and I will be glad to help in any way that I can. Have a good one.